we are on to our keynote from Greg Gefford. Greg is the director of Search and Social at Dealer On. It's a software company that provides websites and online marketing to new car dealers all over the country. He's got over 16 years of online marketing and web design experience, and he speaks internationally at both automotive and SEO conferences. He teaches thousands of small business owners and marketers how to get their sites to show up higher in local search rankings. Greg also spends his time doing freelance website design and SEO for local businesses. He graduated from Southern Methodist University with a BA in Cinema and Communications, and he has an obscure movie quote for just about any situation, which I think we're gonna see in his presentation. And a little fun fact, three of his slides are of tattoos. So see if you can pick those out. And then I also read in his Twitter profile that he loves bacon and that everybody loves bacon. And I just wanted to correct him that I do not love bacon. <laughs> I may be the only person that doesn't, but I do not. I know, sorry. So can we all give Greg a big welcome? Thanks. All right. I talk really fucking fast, so it's gonna be tough to keep up with notes. So you can download the slides right now, bit.ly slash ASW16-SEO. Make sure you write that in lowercase because bit.ly links are case sensitive. Today we're gonna talk about how to turn your affiliate, affiliate marketing up to 11 with local SEO. So as she mentioned, I run the SEO department for a very large website provider. I talk about local SEO all the time. Feel free to check out our blog. I do a thing called the Wednesday Workshop. It's Wednesday videos. They're very short, easy to digest. They're all about online marketing and how to show up better in search results. So those are gonna be very helpful for you. I also write a monthly column on search engine land, so check that out as well. And I'm also a firm believer in the fact that bullet points kill kittens. So there will be no bullet points in the presentation today. And you probably noticed there at the beginning, for those of you that know this is Spinal Tap reference here because it goes up to 11. I was a film major, like she mentioned, and every time I do a presentation, there's a movie theme, and today's theme is comedy movies. We have 148 comedy movie references today, including at least one movie for every year in the last 50 years, and 21 movies from 1985, which was the high point of American film comedy. And for the young bucks in the room, I do have attribution down in the corner that shows what the movie was and the year it was released. Are we ready? Yeah? So why the long face? Are you guys spending all your time looking up at your competitors that rank higher than you? Are you wondering, dude, where's my site in Google? It's fucking frustrating, right? <laughs> you guys feel like you're clueless about SEO? That's all the laughs I get, that's clueless, guys. That's like the best joke and pun we get today, okay? Now, I don't wanna seem like, about to lose my microphone. I don't wanna seem like I've got a huge head with its own gravity system, but I do have some really awesome tips to share with you guys today. And unlike some of the other speakers you may have seen this week, I'm not gonna just pull stuff out of my ass, <laughs> all right? I'm gonna give you real tips that actually work, but keep in mind, there is no miracle pill when it comes to SEO. It takes dedication, it takes hard work, but if you follow the tips that I give you guys today, you'll be able to make your sites as visible and as awesome as the flying Elvises. And just like a fat guy in a little coat, I'm gonna try to squeeze in as many awesome tips as I can into the next 38 minutes. So I gotta admit, when Sean called me up and said, hey man, we want you to keynote Affiliate Summit, I thought it was a really odd choice to have a local SEO guy talk at Affiliate Summit. I was like, yeah, not quite so sure this is a great fit. But then he says, you know what? Everybody loves the really good SEO sessions. It's like big SEO party. It's great. They want that information, they eat it up, so come do it. And I started thinking and I said, you know, it kind of makes sense because nowadays there are so many sites out there that you have to compete against. And if you're throwing up an affiliate site or a site with affiliate links, you've got to have traffic, right? So if you want to get those eyeballs, you've got to be doing SEO so that people will get to the site so that you're gonna get some clicks. So if you're gonna start from scratch, brand new, right now, throw up a site, try to put some affiliate links on it, good luck if you're not doing SEO. It's not gonna show up, you're gonna get no clicks. You've got to stop defining yourselves as affiliate marketers. 
You guys are not affiliate marketers. You're fucking digital badasses that know how to make money off of websites. Okay? It should not define how you market your sites. Don't let being an affiliate marketer get in your head and make that the way that you're marketing everything that you do. Because back in the day, you could just take some affiliate links and build a site around it and be okay. But nowadays that doesn't work. The sites that are the most successful nowadays are the sites that have affiliate links on them, not affiliate links that have sites built around them. So instead of trying to be the most badass site on the entire internet, go smaller, go local. Any website that's associated with a physical storefront or that serves a specific geographic area is gonna get an automatic boost from Google if you've got the right local signals. So you're gonna start off on a much better foot because you've got those local signals. It's a lot easier to create unique content when you're talking about a local website instead of just saying, oh, I've got this affiliate site, I've got to write some unique content and everybody else is doing the same thing I'm doing, okay? It's a lot easier to get links when you're talking about a local website. So your link building efforts are much easier. So it's a lot easier to make that site visible. So let's talk about local SEO. Did most of you guys know there's actually two kinds of SEO? You've got traditional SEO, which is what most of you probably think of. It's doing things to signals both on a site and off a site to influence how that site shows up when somebody does a search inside of Google. Then we have local SEO, which is doing things to a website and to things off of a website to influence how that site shows up in searches in a specific geographic area. And local SEO applies to any business that has a physical storefront or that serves people in a specific geographic area. And there are additional signals involved when it comes to local SEO. You have to do extra things that you don't have to do when you're talking about normal SEO. Now, Google wants local search to be really quick and easy. They want it to be like a drive through window. Google wants you to be able to pull in, get what you want, and pull on through and be on your way. But you guys all know what the problem is with drive through windows, right? They fuck you with the drive through okay? They fuck you with the drive through this is the first of many Google fucking sucks jokes in this deck, okay? SEO is really hard because Google keeps changing the rules. Google doesn't want us to figure out what works. Google wants you to show up because you should legitimately show up, not because you're doing some tips and tricks. Every time Google rolls out a major update, you have to drastically change your SEO strategy. So Panda update rolled out, and now we couldn't have thin content or crappy content. You have to have useful, relevant, good content, so it completely switches the strategy. Now we've got to change the way that we're writing our content. Then we had the Penguin update. Now you've got to change the way that you're building links. You can't just go buy a shit ton of links anymore. You've got to have legitimate links, or it's not going to work. Then we had the Hummingbird update that rolled out and enabled semantic search and completely changed, again, the way that you have to write your content, because now your content has to be much more conversational in nature. Then we had the Pigeon update that rolled out that completely changed the way that Google calculates local search results and you had to change the way that you're doing local search. Then a year ago, they rolled out an update to the Google My Business quality guidelines. I'm gonna dig into this one a little bit because it really demonstrates how much of a jackass Google can be. So April 2014, Google says, hey, you know what? We're gonna help you get your businesses found a little bit easier by letting you add a single descriptive word to the end of your business name. And in fact, we encourage every business to add a descriptor to the end of their business name so that they'll show up better. Then a year ago, they roll out this update and says, actually, we're not gonna allow you to use this. And in fact, if you're using this, you're gonna be penalized. So now, if you've got this descriptor in there that Google fucking told you to use eight months ago and you didn't catch this update, now you get penalized. Just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber. You go and do something like this. And then even better, when we switched from Google Places to Google My Business, you went from a possibility of five business categories to 10, and Google jumps out and says, hey, you should fill out all 10 of these categories. The more categories you fill out, the better you're gonna show up in search. And in fact, a lot of the tools that check how well your profile is filled out, they still penalize you if you don't have all 10 filled out. So then it rolls out this last year, with the update, and Google now says you should only choose the most specific categories because if you choose anything that's redundant or overlaps, now you're gonna get penalized. You're killing me, Smalls. 
And then we lost the seven pack. You guys have seen when you did the searches in the past, you do a local search, you get the seven pack of results, seven local results, name, address, phone number, website link, all that shows up. Now Google rolled it out and that's all gone. We've got the three pack. We lost the link to the website, we lost the address, we lost the phone number. So now you've got to click through. And before you would click and it would take you to Google My Business or Google Places profile. Now you click on it, it takes you to the local finder page where all your competitors are stacked up ne neatly right against you. So once again, Google's making it that much crazier to try to get to businesses. It's mass chaos. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. Then, very recently, they pulled it where you can set your location in the SERPs. So for you guys working on sites, if you're trying to check how somebody in New York sees search, search results or somebody in LA, you could go into Google and say, hey, I want to set my location. Well, now Google does it by your IP address. You can't change it. So if you're trying to check how possible searches might show up in other cities, you're completely fucked now because Google took it away. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. I'm a big fan. So. Sometimes it really seems like the guys at Google are just sitting around in an office trying to figure out how many people they can screw over. In fact, I kind of imagine that sometimes there's a group of guys and they're sitting around in a room and they're just looking at a list of search results and saying this. Fuck you, fuck you, and fuck you. Who's next? You're laughing, he didn't catch it at the end. He says, who's next? So how the heck are you supposed to know what to do if you want to show up in local searches? Well, the best thing to do, really, if you can't hear somebody like me talk and tell you what to do, there's a Google My Business forum. And so you can go in really politely. Oh, by the way, I have that tattooed on my shoulder. It's super sweet. You could go in really politely and you say, hey, look, and you got to be polite or Google's not going to answer. But you go in and politely say, hey, can I trouble you for an answer to this question? And they'll come back and they'll tell you, you could trouble me for a warm glass of shut the hell up. So. I'm sure you guys have all heard of Moz, the SEO tool company. Every year they do a local search ranking factor study where they take the top 40 people worldwide in local SEO and they send us this big long questionnaire, it takes about three hours to fill out. They aggregate all of the answers from those of us that are the top local SEOs and then they can figure out the local search ranking factors every year. So they know from talking to the people that do this day in and day out, which factors matter the most in trying to get sites to rank locally. So for the rest of the presentation, I'm gonna go through and explain these factors and show you how you can apply these to your affiliate sites so that you guys will kick some ass in local search results and get more visibility and get more traffic. So let's start off and talk about on-site signals. This is the most important part, 20.3% of the local search ranking factor studies. Content is the most important signal to Google when we're talking about if you're going to be relevant for search or not. But don't take it the wrong way. I want my $2. Like three people have seen that movie. <laughs> it's not about quantity. You have to have awesome content. It has to be relevant and has to answer the questions that your potential customers would be asking. Stop trying to fool the nerds at Google. There are a lot of smart motherfuckers in this room, but we could combine everybody together and the dumbest guy at Google would be like, <laughs> you guys are stupid, <laughs> right? All these tricks, all these little tricky things that you're trying to do to get your sites to show up, they just don't work anymore. Okay, stop trying to fool those nerds. And for those fans of the 80s, yes, that is Iron Man with a bra on his head in Weird Science. You've got to have an awesome user experience too because it doesn't do you any good to SEO the shit out of your website and get a bunch of traffic if your site sucks because then it's not going to convert and nobody's going to click on those links that you want them to click on. But with a local business or with a website that's focusing on a local area, it's a lot easier to come up with that unique content. I was sitting in an SEO session the other day and somebody said, well, you know, I'm trying to roll this out for all these different products and I've got all these different websites. How do I write unique content? Well, if you're targeting specific geographic areas, it's a heck of a lot easier to come up with unique content because you're talking about stuff related to that geographic area. So boom, all of a sudden your content problem is solved. But then once you come up with that awesome content, these are the specific signals for local that are really important. So if you are trying to take notes, I'm gonna go through this really fast, but write this part down, it's super important. City and state and title tag, absolutely important. Everybody in here should know, but in case you don't, title tag is the most important SEO element on the page. You've gotta have your city and state in there. You also need it in the H1 heading. I also have that tattoo. You've gotta have it in your content as well. There is no magic number, so if you wrote down 17% when you are enjoying session the other day, trash that note, he was just kidding. Also in the alt text on your images, you should have alt text on every image on your site but it's also a great place to put in your local information to help push more local relevancy. 
Also in URLs, wherever you can, it's very important to get that city and state information in there. Also in your meta description, and the meta description obviously does not play towards the ranking algorithm, but it will help you get more clicks because if people are looking for a local solution in Google and they see that you're a local business, they're much more likely to click on that. Also super important to have an embedded Google map on the homepage and contact pages of your site when you're talking about a locally oriented business. And when you do this Google map embed, you don't wanna just go to Google Maps and type in your address. You wanna do it on a brand search or as long as you still can before the Google Plus change happens, do it off your Google My Business page because if you just put in your address, it looks like this. It's just a map pin with no label, and then it's got your address. But if you do it off a branded search, it shows your brand information, it shows your reviews, and your map pin is labeled. It's a better signal, and it looks better to your customers. Also, very important to have NAP on every page and have the NAP marked up with schema. And because none of you guys really do local SEO, you're probably saying, what the fuck is NAP? NAP is name, address, phone number. You've got to have name, address, phone number on every page of your site. And for those of you that don't know, schema is code the search engines got together and agreed on that would organize your information. So there's a lot of different ways that you might write hours of operation. You might write 11-2 a.m. or 11 colon 00 space dash 2 colon 00 a.m. There's all these different ways you can format it. But if you notice in the schema markup right there, you're serving up that hour in the exact way that Google wants it. And notice at the very top right there, you're telling Google that this is a restaurant. There's all kinds of schema markup for different local businesses that you can throw in there and it helps push that signal to Google. Google can crawl you and immediately know what you're doing. You also absolutely have to have a local phone number on the site. It's a hugely important signal to Google that that local phone number is there. And you gotta have a blog, you gotta blog regularly. I'm gonna give you an example here from the last company I worked at, this was our blog. I went to a conference, somebody said this, I said, you know what, I'm gonna put my money where my mouth is and see what happens with this. In the space of a year and a half, I took our blog from 650 visits a month to over 7,500 visits a month on average just by posting one blog post a week. Now it's all good posts, you can't throw up crap. But once you start posting all the time and you're posting about stuff that people understand that you're now a subject matter expert, you're going to get a lot more traffic, you're going to get a lot more links. And when you're talking about local stuff, it's a lot easier to come up with ideas for these blog posts because you can write about things going on in the local area. Make your blog a local destination. Make the blog of your site something that people in the community and the surrounding area want to come to because they're getting useful information out of it because the more they come to your blog, the more they're going to be on your site, the more likely that they are that they're going to click on your links that you want them to click on. So if you need help coming up with ideas for local blog posts, I could spout out a gazillion of them, but I don't have time because I've got 20 minutes left. So go right there. It's an article I wrote on Search Engine Land, bit.ly slash local dash content dash ideas will give you a ton of ideas that you can use to come up with locally oriented blog posts that will help you show up and help give you useful information to people in your area. Moving on to link signals, 20%. And nobody laughs that I use a slide where I've got link Linkovich from Encino Man for links. Now you laugh because I pointed it out so it doesn't count. Thanks to Penguin, links are no longer a numbers game. You guys all remember back in the day, the more links you had, hey, you win, right? Now it doesn't work that way anymore. It's really tough to get links if you're building, like I mentioned earlier, if you're taking a site and you're just like, hey, here's my affiliate site and you're trying to get links, it's really tough to get legitimate links for it, right? But if you've got affiliate links on a local website, it's a heck of a lot easier to get links because now you're talking about a local website. You can get links from other local websites and other local businesses. Now the traditional link builders are really scared of Penguin. So they're only going to target these really high authority, really big juicy links, right? They want the big DA links that are really going to help and carry a lot of juice. But here's a really big pro tip for local SEO. Those really shitty, small, ugly church websites are pure fucking gold because local looks at the hyper-local websites that have no authority and still pass a lot of value for those links. Because remember, we're trying to show up well and be relevant for a local area. So little league sites, church websites, little you know, daycare websites, things like that that are really hyper-local carry a ton of value. So it's really easy to get those links and they make a huge difference. So if you guys are doing link research, you want to make sure that you're not using a single link research tool because they all pull a different swath of links. So make sure you're using Open Site Explorer, Majestic, and Ahrefs all together, throwing everything into a spreadsheet and then deduping. That's gonna give you your best idea of what your actual link profile looks like. And then you wanna run it against your competitors and look for easy, low-hanging fruit. 
Now, obviously, this isn't the entire link building strategy you should use, but it a lot of times can find some easy low-hanging fruit that you can get and make yourself competitive with them very quickly. And then, because you're a local business or because you're serving a local area, take advantage of the things you're already doing. You're probably already involved in the community. You're probably already doing things in the community or you're involved at your church or you're playing golf with the mayor or somebody on city council. Take advantage of those relationships that you have and mine those for links. Those will help you get local links really easily. And then another great source, events and meetups. Go to meetup.com and figure out places that people are meeting and look for people that don't have sponsors and sponsor their meetup for like 50 bucks. 50 bucks a month gets you a super juicy local link. Or look for other events that you can sponsor because local sponsorships are another great way to get local links because anytime there's some sort of event that has sponsors, they're going to have a list of sponsors on the page. You go sponsor a golf tournament, sponsor a little league team. 200 bucks a year gets you your name on a jersey which looks great to the community and also gets you a really juicy local link. Moving on to citations, 13% of the local search ranking factor studies. So for those of you that don't know, citations are mentions of name, address, phone number on other websites. So this is specifically related to if you have a business that has a storefront in that area. There's still a very powerful signal of local relevancy. So if you're almost on page one, you're right at the top of page two, or if you click on the three pack and go to the local finder and see that you're like number four, number five, so you're almost showing up in those top three on page one, you do a little bit of citation work and it can really get you over the hump. What hump? Thank you, there are some fans. For those of you that have not seen this movie, Young Frankenstein is the greatest comedy ever made. And I do have a tattoo of Gene Wilder right here on my arm. <laughs> so your citations play together like this. This is an example of what the citation ecosystem looks like. It's incredibly complicated. You've got all the big thick lines for the major providers that feed down into the medium lines that are the second level that feed into the third lines that are everything's going back and forth and comparing against each other and blah, blah, blah. And it gets super crazy and complicated. But because of that, Google knows with different business types what things should be there. So for your business type, if Google thinks that you should be on these 50 citation sources and you're only on 20 of them, then that could be a big part of the reason why your site's not showing up as well. So David Mim is the guy that runs the local search ranking factor study, and this quote is great. You've got to be where Google expects you to be. So Google expects certain types of signals for certain types of websites. Make sure that you've got all the signals there that Google expects you to have. And those citations, because everything is so complicated, they need to be 100% consistent. It has to be the same everywhere that it appears. And this has no bearing on this conference. Oh wait, the next slide after this, sorry. You can't be incomplete or duplicate or anything because that sends a bad signal to Google. This has no bearing on this conference, but I love this example, so I have to give it to you. This was this crazy weird Cajun car dealer guy that I worked with in Metairie, Louisiana, which is a suburb of New Orleans. So the one there in orange is the correct spelling of the name of his dealership with the apostrophe capital N. I guess it's a Cajun thing, I don't know. The ones there in white are the number of ways the guy misspelled his own dealership's name on his own website. <laughs> so the first month, I literally did nothing to his website. I did nothing to his links. All I did was fix his citations. So his citations were all over the board too. I fixed his website so that his name was consistent and I went through and updated all his citations so that his citations were all consistent. Everything matched the version in orange. In the space of 30 days, the guy went from not showing up in local searches at all to being the number two organic result and the number one map pack result in 30 days just from fixing that. So that's how important citations can be. So if you want to work on citations, you can check Moz Local. It's a free tool. You go drop in your business name and your zip code and it spits out a list like the one there on the left. Now ideally you only see, you should only see one there. If you see multiples, that means that you've got different phone numbers, different addresses, different business names floating around. Gives you an idea really quickly of what you need to fix. But if you click on any one of those, it takes you to that big graph. And that shows the top 15 citation sources. And the really cool thing about it is if you click on any of those bars, it takes you directly to that listing. So you don't have to figure out where that listing is. But it shows you graphically any of the ones with red are either incomplete or inconsistent. Any of the yellows are duplicate. So it's a really quick way to fix the very high level citations. Then you could get more advanced and use a tool called WhiteSpark that checks all of your citations. So if you go into WhiteSpark and you drop in your information, it's going to go find everywhere online that your business name, address, and phone number are mentioned. And just to show you that the crazy local SEO guy can play in the affiliate world, yes, that is an affiliate link for me right there on this slide. So please go sign up for WhiteSpark using that link. Moving on, Google My Business signals, 14.7%, but we've got some stars there because Google is about to roll out an update 
to Google My Business or Google Plus and remove all local information. So for the years and years that they've pushed us to use Google Places and then Google My Business and said, this is your point of contact with your local area and this is the most important thing you could do for local search, now they're pulling all of that local information out and now it's just a social page with absolutely zero locational information there. Looks like I picked the wrong week to quit sniffing blue. I love that. So now your business listing is simply your map listing on Google. That's it. You have no other information there. But it's still important that you claim that location. So if you're trying to claim your location and you don't get that postcard, there is Google phone support. Now they won't claim it for you over the phone, but they will help you get in. Or if you're dealing with a business that maybe somebody claimed it and they don't work there anymore and you don't have access, they can help you get back in. So you gotta make sure, like I mentioned earlier, it's really important, even though the categories don't display on Google Maps, make sure you're picking the right categories because if you pick overlapping categories, that could hurt or you're gonna show up. So moving on, review signals, 8.4% of the local search ranking factor studies. 88% of consumers now trust an online review from a stranger equally or more than a review from friends or family. So absolute strangers are now gospel. And four out of five people will decide not to do business with you if you've got bad reviews. So why does this matter to you guys? Why is it important? Because now that reviews show in an isolated pop-up in the SERPs, if somebody's doing a search and you've got reviews on Google, they're going to see those reviews before they even get to your website or see anything else about you. So if you've got bad reviews, you're not going to get traffic to your site. You cannot fake a good reputation. And that's funny because that's the movie You Can't Buy Me Love, right, with Dr. McDreamy before he was McDreamy. And you can't fake caring about your customers. I tell this to car dealers all the time. If I look at your profile and I see you got a lot, of, a lot of bad reviews, a lot of times I won't take your business because I can't help you if you're a shady motherfucker, right? You can't fake this stuff. You've got to legitimately care about providing a good service to your customers. So what you have to do is make it really easy for your customers to leave reviews and you've got to ask them to leave reviews. You've got to be asking people for reviews if you want to get reviews. But you've got to be really careful. You cannot solicit reviews for Yelp because that's against Yelp's terms of service and it can get you in a lot of trouble with Yelp. But unfortunately you can't ignore Yelp because Yelp is what powers the stars on Apple Maps. So if we're talking about a business with a physical storefront, somebody goes to look you up on their iPhone to figure out how to get to you, how much business are you going to lose? You may have great reviews on Google but then they look you up on Yelp and you've got one or two stars. So you've got to make sure you're still paying attention to Yelp. So here's a really great killer strategy that can help you get more reviews for your business. There's a really awesome platform called Get Five Stars. And what it does is it shoots an email out to your customers and it says, hey, rate us, let us know how we did. On a scale of one to 10, how was your experience with us today? You can set the threshold. We typically set the threshold at seven. So anything that's a review of six or below then takes that person to a form that says, tell us how we fucked up today. So that person can then vent. Because most of the time when you're getting a bad review, that person just wants to blast you. They want to let you know how much you suck. So this way, you're catching them right after their experience and they're still venting and then that emails to you. So you still get the information in case you guys did screw up on something, but now that they've vented, they're much less likely to go leave that publicly somewhere. And then any reviews that are seven or above takes them to a page and says, hey, we really appreciate the fact that you had a great experience. We'd love it if you'd share this on one of the following review sites. And then you can choose which sites you want to send them to to leave those reviews. So this helps you get more reviews and it makes sure that those reviews are more likely to be positive reviews. Then you can also hand out branded postcards or mail out branded postcards to your customers that point them to that same page in that same form. So then you're following up the email with an actual physical piece that says, go to the same page, let us know how we did. You can also follow up with an email or two, but you wanna be careful with automation, because if I get something and I buy the product from you, and then I leave you a review, and then you ask a week later for me to leave you a review, I'm gonna think you're a jackass, I'm probably gonna go change it. Don't fake reviews. This can get you in a lot of trouble on a lot of different platforms. Here's a couple of fun examples. The top one there, Chuck Boone says, great place to buy a car. See Chuck. <laughs> it's actually against the rules in Google to leave a review for the place of business where you work. So this one customer, this one jackass sales guy could have gotten his entire listing blacklisted on Google because he's just trying to get more customers to come see him. 
The second one there, so what happened was this dealership, and this is both from the same dealership, this dealership was spiffing the sales guys. For every review that showed up, a sales guy got 50 bucks extra on his check. So of course they just started faking reviews all over the place. So this Jacob guy on the second review had a crappy experience, stewed about it all weekend, went in on a Monday to write a bad review and saw that the most recent review was from someone that said it was him and that it was a great experience. So now he says, Victor's posting fake posts under my name saying that I like the experience so much, don't believe it. It was the biggest mistake of my life dealing with these people. Again, I can't help you if you're a shady motherfucker. Okay, if people are reading this about your site, you think they're gonna wanna come do business with you? No. Okay, finishing up really quick. Social signals, 5% of the local search ranking factors. Please, you guys, do social the right way. You've got to be social on social media. And please don't tether Facebook to Twitter. You can use Buffer, you can use Hootsuite, you can use Syndable, you can use a million different platforms that let you type in one place and post to multiple spots. But when you do the tether between Facebook and Twitter, your Twitter feed looks like this. All these gorgeous photos that you're sharing on Facebook that are getting you tons of engagement are fb.me links on Twitter. So all the people like me that prefer Twitter are gonna be like, you're a jackass and I'm not clicking on any of your stuff because this is stupid. So don't do it. If you have that tied together, turn that off. Don't simply use social to share affiliate links. You've got to be social because it's called social, need, social media, not buy shit for me media. If all you're doing is sharing your links, nobody's gonna give a crap, nobody's gonna engage, nobody's gonna click on them. Okay, so do it the right way. If you use social media to be social, then people will engage with you. And those people will want to see the stuff that comes out from you in the future and they'll be more likely to click on the things that you want them to click on. So you've got to be interesting. You've got to get people to engage with you. Pro tip, please use Open Graph Markup. Okay, for those of you that don't know, Open Graph Markup lets you dictate what's gonna show up on Facebook and LinkedIn when people share that link. So instead of something like this, where you go share a link on Facebook and Facebook just randomly grabs a photo off of that page, uses your meta description and uses your title tag to display what that link looks like, now you can say, boom, I wanna use this nice pretty picture. And now here's the exact text that I want to use when anyone shares this link. So you could control what happens when these links show up on Facebook and LinkedIn, make it a lot prettier, make it a lot more engageable with the people that are following you. So I'm gonna finish up with a few other quick tips that are unrelated to SEO. Video, video is hugely powerful. It really, really, really boosts the engagement on your website and with the people that are visiting your site. If you're doing anything with video, you should damn well be using Wistia. Do not use YouTube, okay? Use Wistia. Wistia is kick ass. It's a private host. When the video is done, you can even have a lead form pop up at the end of the video. There's a lot of really cool stuff, but most importantly, you get really badass stats. So every time you get a video, you can go back into Wistia and see cool stuff like this. So the graph shows how many people watched it, who watched it, how long they watched it for. If they rewound the video and watched part of it again, you can see right there all the stuff that's in orange on that top part is the number of people that watched it a second time. So you can see also where people start to drop off. Like on this video, they're not watching the last 10 seconds because that's a standard outro. You can also integrate Wistia with your, v with your email marketing platform. And at that point, you can then go into Wistia and see individual users and which videos they watched, how much they watched, and what videos they watched historically. So you can see your most engaged users, which is really cool. And speaking of email marketing, if you use video in your email marketing, it will double or more the click-through rate in your video. So if you guys are doing anything with email marketing, start dropping videos in those. It will make your email marketing skyrocket and go through the roof. It's really, really awesome. And then beacons. I don't know if anyone here knows about beacons yet. A lot of people in SEO have been talking about them for about a year. Beacons can now let you run remarketing and actual foot traffic that was at your location. So forget about the Facebook beacons. The Facebook beacons suck. They only push something up inside of Facebook if that person has Facebook. Yext is a citation management tool. They have a new thing called the Zone Beacon. And what they've done is they've gone out to a lot of different apps and paid for these apps to include their code. So at this point, they've got almost 50 million monthly active users that are on at least one of those apps. So if anyone has any of those apps on their phone, whether the app is open or not, and they come into your location, boom, you can pop up a message on their phone or on their Apple Watch or their Android Watch 
and they've got a message as soon as they walk within range of that beacon, which is a really great way to serve up an affiliate link to somebody that walked into your location as soon as they walk in. Also, any of those people, whether they see that pop-up message or not, you can capture them and create a custom audience for Facebook. So now you can run retargeted ads at people that you know were at your physical location. It's really, really powerful. Imagine somebody's at your location and a week later, they're getting ads from you on Facebook and Instagram with affiliate links in it. It kicks major ass. So hopefully that was not too fast and too painful. And now when you guys are talking about SEO and looking at Google, you're not gonna have that blank glassy stare. And in fact, when you guys think about SEO, maybe you'll be really, really excited. <laughs> Peace, I'm out. That's my contact info. Feel free to email me, ask me any questions you have. That's my Twitter handle. Follow me on Twitter. If you haven't been on Twitter, you would have noticed that I am live tweeting this conference. I live tweet every conference. So it's a great way to get a lot of free tips there. And for anybody that downloads the slides, again, there's the link right there, bit.ly slash ASW16-SEO. And if you download the slides and you are curious, I do have a chronological list of all the movies there at the end. So thanks, everybody. And I just wanted to say, I think we deserve to give a big hand to Sean and Missy, who deserve their own Pinnacle Award for the great conference that they put on. And thank you all for coming. <laughs>